Hello everybody and welcome to another of our summertime special vlogs from Kimmel Bay Church. I do hope you're enjoying the different choices and they encourage you to think about what you might choose. I've had a few people sending me their favourites or saying that vloggers have chosen theirs. Today it's my turn to do a lesser known character. So I thought I would go for a really lesser known character. Just over 11 and a half years ago, our son and daughter-in-law announced that their newly born son was to be called Clement. This was a real surprise for we have tended to go for family names and no one in our families, as far as we know, has ever been called Clement before. What do you do when you hear what a baby is to be called? Well, we said the name over and over again a few times. Then we thought of people we knew with the name. The only one we could really think of was the post-war Labour Prime Minister, Clement Attlee, under whose government Eric and I were born. We looked at what it meant and we thought it was a great name. Inclined to be merciful, compassionate. What great qualities for a boy growing into a man to have. And so like Jesus, our saviour. And of course, then there's Clement in the Bible. Yes, there is a Clement, as I've said, mentioned in Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 3. He's generally overlooked because everybody, including commentators, are always much more interested in what caused the disagreement between those infamous ladies, Euodia and Syntache. So today I want to put things right and for a short time think about Clement, one of just four people from the Philippian church mentioned in the letter. What he said about Clement needs to be teased out, but basically it boils down to three things. That he contended for the cause of the gospel, that he was a fellow worker with Paul, and that his name is in the book of life. We can understand why Paul uses terms like contending for the gospel. He must have felt that he was fighting a hard battle, trying to convince the world that Jesus' death and resurrection was really good news. After all, he was driven out of places, flogged, imprisoned, and even left for dead. And this was what Clement had signed up for. And he's worthy of a mention because he was not ashamed to publicly speak up about Jesus. Like early believers, we often have to defend our faith or find ourselves pitted for it. We get tired out in service and long to just put our feet up or even be a bit like Jonah and run away. So we can say that we do know a bit about what it's like to labour in the cause of the gospel, as Clement did. And being a fellow worker is an extension of this. And how lovely to be a fellow worker of Paul. We're part of a fantastic body of people in the church and we're all fellow workers together not only here in Kimmel Bay, but around the world, in Spain and Moldova, Tanzania, the Philippines, Colombia, and everywhere else in between. And we're especially fellow workers with those who are suffering if we commend them in prayer. We're also part of a multitude that no one will be able to number as it meets around the throne. And Clement will be there for his name is written in the Book of Life. The truth that there is a record of those who have put their trust in God is found throughout as a thread throughout our Bible. It starts with Moses knowing that God had written a record, Exodus 32 verse 32, and finishes in Revelation where there are many references to the book of life. This is the book that will be read at the end of time. And Clement's faith meant that his name was there. So his eternal destiny is secure for all time. And we too can be assured that ours is in the same book if we trust in Jesus. Wow, we'll be praising before the throne of grace with so many people, including Clement. What a joy and a privilege and a sure promise for God's book is one that no one can rub out. Do we know anything more about Clement's life on earth other than what's in, the, in Philippians? Well, we have to delve a little bit into history to find some things. The New Testament, you see, can only take us so far. It 
The story sort of at, ends at Acts with Paul in prison and James in charge of the church in Jerusalem. We get a few hints for Paul hands over to Timothy and Titus and the Apostle John is exiled into the island of Patmos. But now we need to move on to the next generation of Christians who knew the Apostles but were not first-hand witnesses to the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. These leaders of the church are generally called the Apostolic Fathers because they were commissioned by Apostles. Chief of them, a Polycarp of Smyrna, Ignatius of Antioch, both of whom were disciples of John the Apostle, and Clement of Rome, who succeeded Peter as the leader of the church in Rome and is therefore considered to be one of the great leaders. He was a wise Christian and we still have his letters that he wrote to the church in Corinth. Very early on in history, this Clement was said to be the same as was mentioned by Paul. The suggestion is that he travelled to Rome to bring one of the many gifts from that church and to comfort the apostle in prison. With the death of both Paul and Peter, he stepped up to lead the church through very difficult days. He was imprisoned by the Emperor Trajan and, like Paul before him, is reputed to have led many soldiers to faith in Christ. Evidence is that he also died a martyr's death, possibly weighed down with an anchor and thrown into the sea. We shall never know for certain whether Clement in the Phil a letter to the Philippians and the later leader of the church in Rome and the writer of letters are one and the same. But both are great men and should inspire us and it will be great to worship in heaven with him stroke them. Just finally, if you're not sure if your name is written in God's book of life, like Clement's was, then it is really worth being sure. It's not something to earn, it's something on offer. Something on offer to all who trust in Jesus as their Saviour and Lord. Right back in the early days, people asked Peter, what should they do? And he said, repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off. So there's no excuse for anyone, no one is far enough away from God, that they cannot receive this invitation. Clement had received it and acted upon it. Will you? Let's pray. Thank you, our God and Father, that you have a book of life where we can be sure that if we accept Jesus as our Saviour and Lord, you inscribe our names for all eternity. Thank you that we are safe in your keeping and none can pluck us from your hands. May we always be ready to share this good news with those around so that they too may have an opportunity to know this hope. Amen. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have a great day whatever you're doing and enjoy your sure hope in Jesus Christ. See you soon.